Yeah, so I'm very interested in the, the brain mechanisms of memory function and particularly episodic memory, which is your ability to remember events in your life. And when, when you remember an event, you usually remember where it happened and when it happened. Um, and so the question is, how do cells in the brain represent that? The cells in the brain represent all sorts of information by these really brief spikes of activity that just last for one millisecond. If you listen to them on an uh, amplifier, it's like a pop sound. Um, and this is how neurons communicate in a large number of different brain regions. And in particular, I've been studying the entorhinal cortex, where neurons seem to be coding spatial location. So in particular, there's neurons called grid cells that code spatial location. They've been studied in rats. As a rat runs around in an environment, you can record the grid cell and look at the location of the rat as it's running around the environment foraging for food and see where does the grid cell fire. In um, a lot of experiments, we found that as the rat forages around in an open field environment, the particular grid cell will fire in an array of locations that are described as falling on the vertices of equilateral triangles, so they make a regular array of locations. It also can be described as a hexagon. So this regular firing of neurons in different locations in the environment could be a way that uh, the, the brain is coding the spatial location of memories and possibly using that spatial location for navigation in the future. So when I'm sitting here in this chair, I can tell where I am you know, by visual stimuli, but if I closed my eyes or the room were completely dark, I would still have an awareness of my location in the room. And so if, you know, if it were completely dark, I could still get up and find my way to the door. You know, the, probably most people experience this if they're in a, an unfamiliar hotel room and they have to get up and you know, go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. They can do it in complete darkness. And that depends on your ability to keep track of your location independent of any other sensory stimuli. So grid cells could be very important for that, um, keeping track of spatial location. My interest in working on them had came to do with uh, understanding the mechanism of generating grid cells and how it was based on some of the circuit and cellular properties in the entorhinal cortex. And in particular, what I've done is show a role of oscillations in the generation of grid cells. So there was a model of oscillation, how oscillations could create grid cells that had been developed by a guy named Neil Burgess in, um, in University College in London. And I tested that model by doing experiments looking at um, the role of oscillations in grid cells. And one of the experiments we did was to essentially get rid of the uh, oscillations of a certain frequency in the entorhinal cortex and see how the grid cells would change. So a student in my laboratory named Mark Brandon made infusions of a pharmacological agent that would shut off oscillations in the entorhinal cortex by causing excessive inhibition in an area known as the medial septum. And that shut off these oscillations in the entorhinal cortex. Um, and they're, they're referred to as theta rhythm oscillations because they're in the around seven hertz, which is in the theta band of the EEG. So he did this infusion of the drug. This turned off the oscillations in entorhinal cortex, and it turned off the pattern of spatial firing of the grid cells. So they were still firing spikes, but they weren't firing in this regular array of locations. They were firing uniformly in the environment. And it's very interesting because it's been shown that same drug infusion will make rats unable to perform tasks as if they've lost their ability to maintain their spatial memory.